heroes. Heroes. We live in an age where we desperately need heroes. There was a time when that wasn't true. And what I mean by that, there was heroes identifiable all around us. And we didn't have to make up heroes. But it appears in the mid-1960s, the comic books came alive with heroes. And we needed to have so many of them. Now, we're going to look at four everyday, non-enhanced heroes over the next four weeks. Now, there's heroes out there like the Hulk. You know, the Hulk was, you know, medically changed due to an accident or Spider-Man. But I want us to take a look at everyday heroes who do extraordinary things to get extraordinary results. Let's see if you can pick out the first hero. Na 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 na. Batman. Bruce Wayne was that masked crusader who uh, had that wonderful sidekick. He had Alfred. There was a time that Gotham City needed to hear to have a hero. They would have super villains that, for whatever reason, Commissioner Gordon and Chief of the Police uh, O'Hara just couldn't seem to capture. And they would get frustrated, and then Batman came along, and now they could have this, uh, this release. They could put the bat signal into the sky, and they could go to the red phone, and they could call up Batman. Now, what's interesting, not only did that bat signal uh, alert Batman that he was going to be needed, but it also alerted the people, hey, you've got a hero ready to go to bat for you. And then there was the warning to the villains, Batman has been alerted. You are now in serious trouble and you're going to get caught. That's our Batman. Now, let's back up a little bit and understand a little bit more about the man behind the mask. So, Bruce Wayne, when he was little, uh, his parents had been murdered. And so, he grew up underneath the tutelage of Alfred, but he wanted to change the world in a positive way. And so, he prepared himself physically to be a Batman. He then uh, worked with his mind so that he would be ready, he'd be sharp. He, he learned the psychology of how a criminal would work. And so when that day came and that bat signal went out, he was ready to obey. That's going to be the theme for this first week is obedience. And we're going to look to the book of Esther to see another hero, a biblical hero, a hero too that answered to the call. So we're going to pick the story up with early on. The Israelites were not doing what they ought to be doing. And so an outside king came in and captured the territory and took captive the leaders and the uh, political leaders and the religious leaders, and in this, Mordecai got picked up. Well, he decided that he was going to bring Esther, his cousin, along. The first act of obedience was she could have decided to stay. There was nothing forcing her to go, but Mordecai said, I need to be your protector because she was very beautiful, and she would be something or someone that people would want to take advantage of. And so she obeyed, and she went with Mordecai. Now, if you read the book that we have produced for this sermon series, you'll see that uh, the queen to the king 
decided that she wasn't going to obey. She was going to do her own thing out of pride. And, and, uh, and because of that, she was set aside and they needed to have a new, a new queen. And so again, they went out and they wanted to find these beautiful women that could be the queen. And so Esther was picked to be part of this group of young girls that would prepare themselves for a year to become the next queen. Now again, this is a point of obedience. She obeyed and she went into this. We don't know how, how that happened, but we know that it did. So, but Mordecai gave her one big instruction. Do not reveal that you come from the Jewish society. Do not let them know that you are an Israelite. And so she went in to this uh, process and she was preparing her mind because there'd be challenges to what a queen would have to do. So she needed to be prepared. She needed to be smart. She needed to know the psychology of how to deal with people. She trained her body physically she prepared herself that she would be the best uh, person when presented to the king, that he would pick her. And so it came time, and the, the king went through the different girls, and he put his eye on Esther and then made her queen. Now, a period of time went along, and Mordecai was still watching over her, but there came a, a time when the Israelites, the Jews, were in crisis that the one person that was second in charge wanted to get rid of all of the Jews because he did not like how Mordecai treated him. And so Mordecai got a hold of Esther and he said, look, you are not going to be saved if the edict uh, continues and that all the Jews are to be uh, slain and murdered, you're going to be slain and murdered as well. Being queen is not going to stop you. And so he told her to prepare herself to go in and to see the king. Now here's the thing. If you go to the king without a previous invitation, if he does not hold out his scepter and invite you to come in, you are immediately then put out into the street and you're put to death. And she reminded Mordecai of this. And Mordecai said, make a plan. Pray with me and we will find a solution. And this is what Esther did. Together they prayed and they got all of their people together and they prayed. And the time came. And she put together this plan. And then she went into the king. Now the king then accepted her into, the, into his royal throne room and he said, Queen Esther, I will give you half of everything that I own. What is your wish? And she had put together a plan and she said, I would like to have you come to dinner. Wow, the king is really taken aback. Well, I want you to read the story either in the book of Esther or how I uh, put my twist onto the story in the book for you to know the rest of all of these details. But here is the thing. She was obedient. She was obedient to Mordecai. She was obedient to the king. And she was obedient to her God, Yahweh. And because of that, a young girl... An everyday person did extraordinary things to, got, to get extraordinary results. Her people were saved because of what she did. So, like Batman and like Esther, they made little steps of obedience. So I'm asking you, as you are being asked to do certain things, are you being obedient? When God calls you, are you being obedient? 
Now, I don't mean, well, it may be being called into the ministry like I was, which I laughed at. But there are so many other ways of being called. Are you preparing yourself? Once you know that you're moving in a certain direction, are you training yourself? Are you physically training? Are you mentally training? Are you spiritually training? These are all things that are important because you are an everyday person. But I believe God is calling each and every one of us to do extra ordinary things to get extra ordinary results. Let's pray. God of Esther, in your forethought, you knew that she needed to be prepared and that she needed to follow a certain path to prepare her to save her people. Lord, I believe that you are working in each one of our lives and within our church and within our communities. Lord, lift us up, guide us, direct us, and let us begin to be obedient, just like Bruce Wayne, just like Esther and Mordecai, so that we can do extraordinary things to get extraordinary results that will ultimately give you all the glory and the honor and the praise. Amen. See you next time with another cast of characters.